So here we are in my bathroom. This is at the new church building. It's the only bathroom in the house for now. Um, in the event that I actually have to live here and use it, <laughs> I need a mirror and somewhere to put some stuff because this sink isn't going to cut it. Anyway, I'm going to do a recessed vanity mirror here, okay? Uh, medicine cabinet. Now, if you live in a house and your house is older than 1980, let's say, there's a really good possibility that there is no plumbing or wiring in that wall at all, okay? They did make a change to the building code, so now even sinks need to be vented. But in the old days, as long as the sink was in three feet of the stack, no venting necessary. So what you can do is you can just cut a hole just about anywhere and find out if you can put a cabinet in. Now, my cabinet is nothing special because I'm not putting a lot of money into this bathroom. It's just a good old plastic one with a mirror on it. And it is just for 16 inches wide on the outside which means it's designed to fit between the two studs of a, of a house. Now, the likelihood that the studs are exactly where they should be is very small. So in this video, we're gonna cut the stud, we're gonna reframe, we're gonna relocate, and then install this thing. We'll go through all the options. What we wanna do, though, is try to be careful to install it somewhat, you know, center line, right? You wanna, there's lots you can learn here for installing things, so. We are gonna be just shy of 21. I am going to mark my wall where I want my cabinet. Okay, I'm going to call that center. Now, just for the record, if you are in a newer house, or after you explore your hole here, like I'm going to do right now, and you find that you have wiring and plumbing in the way, you can do surface mounted. Okay, and they're about three inches wide. But in a situation like this where I got a really small sink, having a surface mount of vanity, it just, it's awkward and ugly. So anyway, what we would do, the exploration hole. Okay, I'm just doing a couple of inches. And you can use a drywall saw if you like, but the truth is, if you're not sure if you have wiring or plumbing, you don't want to use a power tool here. Okay, so just running a drywall knife through the wall makes a lot of sense. All right, so there we go, there's our hole. Take a peek in here, and I don't have any plumbing or wiring. That's brilliant. So now I know I can move forward. Okay. Yay. So this is the inside of the cabinet. All right, and we want to cut the hole just relatively to the same dimensions as the back of this cabinet case so that this overlaps the drywall and we don't have it to do any painting or refinishing. So we're gonna go, it's 13 by 17. All right, and we're gonna go plus an eighth to each of those dimensions just to give us a little wiggle room. So we've got our center line. Okay, and now we wanna go on your level. It's good to have a small level like this. This is actually not a good situation for using a laser level. 17, here we go. Now, so I'm gonna just mark on my level, the height of my box, okay? So now I can decide where I want my mirror. And I'm gonna be able to see the top of my head. The top of my head's more important than my, my waist. Okay, so I like this. And that's 17 and an eighth, all right. There we go, that's my center line. And there's my top and bottom. Now we gotta do is take 13 and eighth by the center. What's half a 13 and an eighth, Max? Six and a half and an oomph. <laughs> right here. Okay. So I got all four sides now. So now I'm just gonna use my level and I'm put it up against the wall, make it level. Now, if you have a painted surface and you wanna be careful not to create more work, and go slow and make sure you don't make the line too long. I am going to paint this room when it's done because I hate white walls. Even though I'm only here temporarily. <laughs> I know what's going to happen there. That's a battle I'm not going to win. So I might as well just get on page right now. Because my wife is not going to want to have to use a bathroom with these nasty white walls. <laughs> I'm doing renovations with mostly hand tools, right? It makes everything seem so easy. Uh, drywall saw. Now that we know there's no wiring, 
All right, we know we're good to go. Now when you're using these tools, it's not about being strong, it's about being fast. If you work fast, then the teeth do all the work. Doesn't matter how strong you are. <laughs> right? And that'll just pop off the screws. And in this case, there's only one. That's awesome. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is trim here and here. And I'm gonna use my drill. Can't find my drill. That's okay, it's just a drywall screw. Truth is, it isn't gonna matter because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut right through the stud here and here, okay? And continue that hole all the way to the back wall. Now, I'm gonna use a cordless DeWalt uh, reciprocating saw here. It should do most of the work. When I get near the end, I'm gonna have wood left over. I'm actually gonna cheat. Ah. I'll break off the stud first, and then I'm gonna use this multi-tool to clean it up and finish it off. We obviously missed a little bit of the wood in the back. Now, now it's time for a little finesse. <laughs> Looks like it's plugged in. Really? Don't ask. I didn't find the problem. <laughs> And today's shout out goes off to Willie. He did some work in his kitchen, updated his hood fan and did a new backsplash install. Awesome work. It's good to see people are taking on even smaller projects while they're learning to learn how to do DIY. This is amazing. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Send us your submissions. If you'd like to share the world what you're up to and let us know where you live. All right, now cheers and let's get back to some learning. We are going to just do a dry fit test here. See if that fits the hole. It's a little bit snug, isn't it? Nice shelf. God, Jeff, you're cheap. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm just a little bit too snug here. I obviously just cut inside the line a little bit and a couple of spots. Yeah. What happens, you know, sometimes we like to think like finishers or we're doing the rough work. It's just not necessary. You're gonna make a hole, make a hole. Perfect. See, the side was squished before, so the shelf was all buckling. See? <laughs> nice. All right, now, that's not good enough by itself. We have to build this so that in the event of an earthquake or something like that, it doesn't shake out of the wall and fall in the sink and shatter into a thousand pieces. So the way that these things are designed is uh, they don't have pre-drilled holes, okay? But here there's a space where you could maybe put a screw, right? But what I'm going to recommend is you actually want to drill through the side. Okay, so we're going to grab a couple of pieces of 2x4 that are bigger than the hole. Let's call it 20 inches. Just a little bit. Put one on each side, in sideways. Throw in a couple of drywall screws and then we'll mount it. That will work out really well. Let's get a couple of marks here. 
20 inches. 40 inches, give or take, right? That needs to be set deeper. There we go. I don't need a lot of power to make two cuts. And then this always handy, but generally speaking, right? All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, now, I'm gonna install this flat. I don't have to go the front and back. It's not gonna work. I'm gonna trust these screws. I wanna do it really close to the edge. I wanna put about four of them in here, okay? Now to be extra safe, you could always apply adhesive to the back of the wood and then pinch it in. Ooh, careful. All right. There we go. And we'll do this left-handed now. Now, as far as the skill sets that it takes to do this kind of thing, that's just plastic, right? Aside from having a couple of specialty cutting tools to cut the stud out of the way, doing something like this is pretty basic. I'm gonna say this is definitely a DIY project. I'm gonna give it a score of about two and a half on the difficulty scale. There we go, a couple of hand tools, 10 minutes later, bam, I've got storage and a mirror. Solution to a problem. Now, not every bathroom has to be um, like Taj Mahal, right? <laughs> Sometimes a, a basic problem just needs a basic solution. I needed more storage, now I got it. Problem solved, 20 bucks for the mirror, I think, and just a few minutes of my time. That is the power of DIY. If you'd like to see other videos about how we do renovations, check the link over here. We've got actually entire projects about how to remodel your entire bathroom right from the studs. Check that out if you're gonna be a DIYer, change your whole life. Cheers.